Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Smith. And as a lot of you know, I'm the voice and the astrologer behind this YouTube channel, Nonconformist Conscience. You know that there's quite a few new faces um, for people who are listening um, that have subscribed. So welcome. I'm really excited that you guys uh, find value in what I am seeing being reflected in the astrology. Before I dive into this week, I want to say happy birthday to all of the Taurus. This year, I am doing a birthday special for each month for each one of the signs. And so for this month until May 20th, I am doing a birthday special for those of you who are Born under the sign of Taurus, it is a $75 reading that is an hour and a half long, and we are going to go over your natal chart and why you're here, why you've chosen to come in this lifetime, and what you're trying to do and work on on a soul level in order to evolve and grow. I will also go over your solar return. So looking at the dynamics that you're working on for this year. Like I said, it's $75. You'll meet with me on Zoom. It will be recorded and I will send you the recording so you can have indefinitely. So now that I have that out of the way, I did a full written report going over this week and the things that I'm going to talk about. So if you're someone who likes to read, I will post the link in the description for that. I will also post a link if you are someone who wants to book with me. So without further ado, let us dive into this week's astrology. So this is on the heels of that Jupiter Uranus conjunction that happened on Saturday, the 20th and other places around the world. It was the 21st. And I talked about that last week. If you didn't watch it or read it, you can go back and uh, get up to speed, up to date on what that entails. This is really interesting because it's still this week is pulling in those energies. There are conversations happening with that conjunction. That conjunction is still going on. And that conjunction is a new phase between Jupiter and Uranus. So there is a lot that we are wanting to reconnect with on a soul level about who we naturally are, right? It's something, it's where we're wanting to recover. It's where we're wanting to understand our personal truths, some type of philosophical, cosmological viewpoint or understanding that feels authentic to our nature as a way to continue to objectify and individuate thinking for ourselves, um, to liberate from the past of where we have over-identified with certain dynamics that have been conditioned. And what I mean by conditioned is learned. All of us choose to come into this lifetime with a certain family and a certain place dealing with certain dynamics that really recondition us um, from our prior lifetimes. It's about um, picking back up from where we left off of from a prior lifetime. And oftentimes this conditioning can really be about the things that are not in resonance with us on a soul level, where distortions have come into play, where we've over-identified with those distortions, where old trauma that we've experienced dealing with our conditioning or the things that we've learned have affected our sense of self, our self-esteem, and who we are on a soul level. And so it's about really reconnecting with the truth of who we are on a soul level. This happens at all stages of evolution. So it's really important for us to keep this in mind as I talk about this week. So today is the 22nd of April, and we have Venus and Aries in a balsamic phase semi-sextile to Jupiter in the sign of Taurus, which is ruled by that Venus and Aries, keeping in mind that Venus and Aries is ruled by Mars, was in the sign of Pisces. So it's it's really interesting. We've been dealing with these dynamics of balsamic energy. So the need to culminate something that's also representing the totality of a whole evolutionary cycle and experience where we can really tap into what's timeless in nature. 
And then there's also this dynamic of these new phases, like the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that happened in all of the Aries energy that we're experiencing with the North Node there, Chiron there, Mercury retrograde about to station direct on the 28th, no, 25th, excuse me, and also um, Venus there. So it's like, there's a lot that is wanting to culminate in order for a rebirthing to happen. I like to think of Pisces and the balsamic phase as like the cosmic womb. And that's where we are nurturing something in order to wrap it up, right? In order to fully understand the totality of it, the timeless nature of the truth of all of the experiences that we've had that have led to this culmination. And then Aries and the new phase really represent a birthing process. It's initiating something. It's not formed yet because it's initiating. So it's speaking to a whole new evolutionary cycle that's wanting to take place. It's brand new. So it's really about being in this state of becoming and really understanding who we are as new desires become seated into our consciousness. So with Venus in a balsamic semi-sextile to Uranus and Jupiter in the sign of Taurus, there's like this need to culminate these old desires, right? Because it's Venus is ruled by Mars and Pisces. So it's this culmination, Mars and Pisces, the sign of Pisces. And then this is in a balsamic phase. So it's speaking, it's almost like a double signature of this. And it's speaking to the need to culminate old desires around how we have interacted with others what our values and our beliefs and our needs have been that we've learned, how maybe ideals have been perpetuated and imbalances have been created stemming from them, remembering that the South Node is in Libra and is ruled by this Venus and Aries. So it's like, have we learned to be codependent? Have we learned to abandon ourselves and take on the values of others as a way for us to feel secure? Have we learned to externalize our validation and our self-worth? With Venus and Aries, it's saying, hey, let's reconnect with our own individual nature. And this is really seen with this being semi-sextile to Uranus and Jupiter. So it's like, we're objectifying Uranus, these old values and where we've over-identified with them and it's been learned, right? But it's not in resonance on a soul level with our own unique soul individuality. And Jupiter here is wanting us to calm in this semi-sextile and a balsamic phase. It's wanting us to culminate these long-standing beliefs about ourselves that we've taken on that have maybe affected our sense of self-worth or our unique individuality. Jupiter can be about our, our, our authenticity, uh, I'm getting tongue-tied, our authenticity and beliefs. And on the flip side, it can be about our personal truth. So it can be about lies. It can be about truths. It can be about being inauthentic and overcompensating because we feel insecure or it can be about really expanding Jupiter on our authentic nature, on our own individual um, relationship to self. And that's that Taurus dynamic. So this is having us, Venus and Aries ruling this, being semi-sextile and a balsamic phase to Uranus and Jupiter is really about us culminating these old dynamics in order and having the courage to go there, Aries, right? culminating these old desires that stem from what we've learned because how we're conditioned really structures our consciousness and from our consciousness uh, we have desires that are seeded into it that you know sometimes we're meant to act on them sometimes we're not but oftentimes whenever we act on them we get to learn did that really feel authentic to me and so there's this individuating quality that's happening within this conversation 
and needing to have the courage to go there and to continue to objectify this in order to understand what is true. What is the actual totality of the truth, the balsamic phase? And then this creates a rebirthing of self-discovery, of new desires being seeded into our consciousness in order for us to discern whether or not we want to act on them. That way we can expand upon our inner relationship to self, Jupiter and Taurus, while also transforming our inner relationship to self, Uranus and Taurus. So it's this dynamic of really wanting to nurture and foster this um, desire of going within and reconnecting to objectify what's true and what's not true, and then to really jettison the untruths and the old beliefs and the old values and the old needs that we've over-identified with that are not in alignment with our unique soul nature. And as we do that, a new cycle is birthed, okay? Then on, oh, no. And then this is the other thing I want to talk about for today. And it's playing out during this um, Scorpio full moon that's happening tomorrow, but it starts today. So the sun in Taurus is in a last quarter square to Pluto and Aquarius, that sun being ruled by Venus and Aries, that Pluto and Aquarius being ruled by Uranus and Taurus. And again, that Uranus and Taurus is also ruled by that Venus and Aries. So what is a last quarter phase? Well, it denotes action and it can create insecurity because we can have a crisis in our consciousness. What the hell do I believe? <laughs> like, that's the way I feel like it can come across. And so we are really meant to throw off what isn't connected to us. And the sun is about where we are meant to self-actualize. Like in our natal charts, it speaks to how everything in our chart gets funneled into this. And it shows us how we're doing this, right? Like my sun is in the ninth house and it's in Capricorn. So it's very much about me utilizing all of my experiences that are reflected in my own chart and that I've had direct experience with in this lifetime and prior lifetimes as a way to reconnect with my own sense of authenticity and personal truths, ninth house, understanding what feels authentic to me. So that way I can be my own authority and recover my voice within society. That is part of my son being in Capricorn. So you can see how this can kind of play out in other people's charts. The sun is really cool to think about in that way. And in a transit like this, it shows us how this sun is working with our own sun and the aspects that this transit is making with planets in our own chart. So the transit of the sun in Taurus is very much about self-actualizing through reconnecting with our inner relationship to self and our unique individuality within it. So that's understanding what are our values, what are our needs, what do we give meaning to, what do we believe? Um, it's about understanding what our own inner knowledge is, the ability to connect with our inner voice. It's about being self-sufficient and self-reliant as opposed to relying on other people. And it's about connecting with our natural self-worth, right? So wherever this sun is falling in your chart by house, you're going to be seeing how this is working out in your chart. For me, the sun right now, is in my 12th house. So I'm culminating all of these dynamics around where I've had self-worth issues and really coming to understand what my own values are. You know, you can see it play out if it's like falling in your 11th house. This is about liberating from old values that are in resonance with your unique individuality. And that's part of the 11th house. Let's say it's in the sixth house. You're self-actualizing through self-improving upon your relationship to self, you know, so you can see how this kind of works out wherever it falls in your own chart. With the sun in a last quarter square to Pluto and Aquarius, this is really about getting to the bottom of Pluto, where we have over-identified with things that are not intrinsic to our unique individuality 
and the need to throw off anything that goes against who we are. And it's about fortifying our relationship to self through objectifying these dynamics. And as we do that, we pull in Venus and Aries ruling this sun and also the ruler of Pluto, Uranus and Taurus. So it's like, as we liberate and throw off these dynamics, again, these are very much like um, dynamics that are repeating throughout the week, okay? But it's as we do that, and we have the courage to do this, we get to learn more about ourselves and we get to create action that gives us feedback to learn more about ourselves, to reconnect with ourselves, to where so much is about grounding within ourselves it's yin energy it wants to bring us back down to earth right it's interesting because if you've ever been out um around a lot of people eventually you want to ground back into yourself and that's the function of taurus sometimes crisis happens when we're not around a lot of people and so whenever we're just staying by ourselves and so there's a need to have relationships with others to get feedback to learn more so you can see how that works but this conversation is really about transforming our relationship to self through having the willingness and the courage to self-discover as we discover what doesn't feel true for us, what isn't aligning with us, where we've learned certain values or needs that have affected our sense of self-worth and the need to throw that off. But there can be this dynamic tension around, I don't know what to believe. I've learned this and actually my security lies within this because this is what I know. And this is what feels familiar. And this square says, mm -mm, you've, you've got to throw this off. You've got to listen to your inner voice, Taurus. You've got to connect with this. You've got to connect with your inner knowledge and you've got to throw it off. Um, that way you can learn more about what does feel right to fortify and strengthen this relationship to self, Taurus. Then tomorrow on the 23rd, we have this Scorpio full moon happening at, I want to actually pull this up while I talk to you guys so I can really speak to it. Um, it is happening at four degrees and 17 minutes in the sign of Scorpio. So this full moon is ruled by Pluto and Aquarius as well. The really interesting thing to think about is if you think back to November of last year, around the 17th or 13th, I can't remember. I have it in the written forecast. You can look at it. There was a new moon happening in Scorpio and it was then ruled by Pluto and Capricorn. So we were starting this whole brand new cycle back then around getting to the bottom of our psychological and emotional dynamics where maybe we suppressed or repressed them. That's pulling in that Pluto and Capricorn that was happening and the need to really analyze all of this and how it's affected us on emotional and psychological levels. And to start a brand new cycle of thinking for oneself through really dissolving those old structures of our conditioning and what we learned. And now, six months later, we have a full moon happening in the same sign, speaking to this has reached the fullness of this cycle since that new moon occurred back in November this time Pluto is in Aquarius. So it's like all of this work you've been doing around self-reflecting um, and looking at where maybe you've repressed or suppressed something or where you have felt oppressed and getting to the bottom of how it's affected you psychologically and emotionally. Now this full moon says we've got to compare and contrast this stuff in order to liberate from it in order to think for ourselves, in order to continue this evolutionary journey of individuating. Um, and that can be individuating on, you know, spiritual levels, personal levels, all, it runs the gamut here. So 
it's really interesting because during this full moon, it's actually in a T-square to Pluto and Aquarius. So we know whenever a full moon happens that that is the moon opposing the sun. It's where the sun is really illuminating these emotional and psychological dynamics that were meant to understand what needs to be opposed and thrown off. That's the nature of an opposition. It's where it has kind of a Libra feel to it because we're needing to compare and contrast to understand what we're meant to throw off. But it's in a square to Pluto and Aquarius. Both of these are in a last quarter square. The sun's in a last quarter square to Pluto and the moon is in a last quarter square. So again, it's this need to, you know, we can have this tension of, oh my God, I don't know what to believe. I'm having a crisis within my beliefs. I'm having a crisis within my consciousness right now. And it's pulling in, who am I? Why am I the way that I am? And how do I strengthen my relationship to self? It creates this tension of saying you're going to have to objectify these emotional and psychological dynamics revolving around your relationship to self and what you've learned and how that's impacted you so that you can reconnect with your relationship to self and understand more deeply who you are on a very unique, intrinsic, individualized level. And so this full moon can really be bringing up all of these things. The crisis in consciousness is, who am I? And that is really emphasized with Venus ruling that sun that's in dynamic tension to Pluto, Venus and Aries. Aries can be where we have like an identity crisis. Oh, I don't know who I am. Anyone with an Aries moon, time and time again with clients, I I hear from them like, oh, I'm having this period of my life where I really don't know who I am. And it's because they're in a perpetual state of becoming, of really learning who they are, right? It's in this like new phase energy of connecting with their emotions. So Venus ruling the sun that is opposing the moon and squaring Pluto can really bring in this dynamic on a soul level of who am I? What do I need? What do I value? How do I survive? How do I self-sustain? How do I feel about myself? And then that moon is saying, let's really get to the bottom of where this is coming from and objectify the inner psychology and emotional dynamics of how did you learn about who you were growing up? How have you learned about who you are up until now? And now really thinking for oneself and throwing off what doesn't resonate, what does not feel true for you. Because we've got to remember that this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is also in Taurus ruled by Venus. So again, it goes back to what I just spoke to, like what feels authentic for you? What are you wanting to learn? What are you wanting to expand upon? You know, we can all have in our lives at different moments the need to reconnect with self and this full moon really speaks to that. So <clears throat> the other thing I want to mention, and I've been mentioning it for weeks, but it, it's definitely pulling in this energy during this full moon is Saturn and the sign of Pisces is in conjunct the south node in Libra. And this is in a full phase in conjunct. So it's about power dynamics and understanding what power is, what powerlessness is, and if crises are happening around that. Um, power on a soul level is what is known and familiar, what we've already experienced, and powerlessness. So and power is where our security lies. Powerlessness on a soul level is kind of the thing that gets us to evolve. It's like, this is unfamiliar, unknown territory. I haven't experienced it yet, and I feel powerless. So with Saturn and Pisces in a full phase in conjunct to the South Node in Libra, that South Node is ruled by Venus and Aries. Again, we can see that these are very much repeating signatures throughout this week. But this really speaks to this need to self-reflect Saturn on what our ideals have been around our relationships, South Node and Libra. How those ideals 
have affected our past relationships, looking at the extremes that were created by them. This is also looking at how were we conditioned to do relationships, Saturn, our conditioning. Saturn and Pisces wants us to dissolve man-made structures and to restructure our consciousness, meaning that we're needing to throw off old conditioning in order to restructure our consciousness because going back to our conditioning structures our consciousness. So this is really looking at what are more like timeless and universal principles within relationships and how do we become secure within those even if they feel unknown to us because how we've learned to do relationships up until this point has really been rooted in more mainstream temporal man-made structures and so this full moon is having us look at these dynamics and how they again have affected us psychologically and emotionally does your security lie with keeping the status quo within relationships that are not based in equity equity can be deceiving when we're looking at saturn and pisces this can be i feel like this is an equitable relationship but i listen to my partner from where they're coming from libra but they don't listen to where i'm coming from and so i abandon myself time and time again as a way to keep the status quo and to make me feel like this relationship is rooted in equity there's so many ways that this can show up so it's having us self-reflect on all of this. It's also having us self-reflect on where we've made incorrect judgment in our relationships in the past as a way to gain wisdom about it so we can culminate this old stuff. So it's like needing to take responsibility for our own choices and prior relationships and to look at what were our motivations behind that. That's such a Pluto-Scorpio dynamic. Pluto confronts us with our hidden motivations. Sometimes that looks like I've been conditioned to get love and receive love by doing this. And really it's a manipulation. That can look like I'm going to tell you that I love all the things that you love, even though I don't, right? That's still being manipulative. Maybe you had a parent who was like that and you watched that. It can be any type of these dynamics and really having us take responsibility instead of feeling victimized by it. All of our choices lead to where we have crisis usually. And so it's about taking responsibility in order to heal this, in order to heal where extremes have occurred, stemming from an incorrect judgment of the past and really looking at our inner psychology and our own motivations behind doing these things. What were our... I, our ideals around this so with venus ruling that south node in libra it's really about learning how to be interdependent in relationships instead of codependent it's learning about how i can be myself while still in this relationship i don't have to abandon myself if i feel like i do maybe this isn't the relationship for me why would i want to keep the status quo going this can be with family, friends, anybody. This is Libra, okay? So the other thing I want to talk about is Ceres is in Capricorn and is in a last quarter square to Chiron and Aries. So Ceres is bringing in this Saturn and Pisces dynamic, what I just spoke of, and then it's square to chiron and aries ruled by mars and pisces so it's again these culminating um dynamics crisis and belief and needing to start something new through understanding the past through reflecting on it through gaining the wisdom from the direct experience of incorrect judgment and how we can learn about discernment and making new choices and correct judgment through being discriminant instead of indiscriminate, which is also a Scorpio dynamic. So Ceres is the great mother who helps us nurture and reconnect and recover our soul nature. Ceres in Capricorn is helping us to reconnect with our sense of natural authority. I can ask and answer my own questions. You know, this is pulling in that Libra South note. So have you, 
are you someone who always asks other people to answer for you because you don't know how to answer your own questions? This can also be when we ask and answer our own questions, that's about us making our correct judgment. Ceres and the sign of Capricorn is also helping us to emotionally mature through reflecting on these old prior dynamics. And through that self-reflection, we get to really understand all of this. And this is during this full moon. So we get to culminate this, oppose things, dig deep into our psychology and our emotional dynamics in order to gain deep wisdom that helps us emotionally mature and fortify our relationship to self, okay? So the square to Chiron is where we are needing to look at how old wounds have affected what we believe about ourselves and our ability to be our own authority. Are you always feeling like you have to prove yourself in order to feel worthy? Do you feel like you can be independent in relationships or do you give your authority away while in relationships to others, work, family, partners, whoever? This is having us look at all of this and to analyze it, to get to the bottom of it, to liberate from it, to reconnect with our individuality, to nurture that and to emotionally mature. Ceres is also trining Uranus and Jupiter, and it's what we call a disseminating trine. So as we are looking at all of this, throwing off these dynamics, we can really connect with, through that disseminating try, our individuality, Uranus, and our authentic nature, Jupiter, as a way to reconnect and nurture our sense of inner authority and to strengthen our self-esteem and to become more self-sufficient. So again, this full moon is having us look at all of this to see what we need to oppose, what we need to liberate, what we need to jettison, where we've overconnected or over-identified with some learning around these dynamics and to really start anew to as we do this, to start a new cycle of self-discovery, Venus and Aries is ruling so much of this energy. So it's kind of an exciting time, but it takes a lot of courage to just go there with oneself. Because this is the other thing that I want to speak to about Scorpio is this is where we get confronted on an internal level with who we are, who we aren't, and who we absolutely cannot be. I love that expression of it. It is definitely a teaching and evolutionary astrology about Scorpio. And as someone who has Pluto and Scorpio and four planets and the eighth house, I can tell you that my life has been about me confronting myself. Um, And that's this feel that can happen with this full moon is where has a limit been reached Where am I acting out of character? Where am I acting out of my authentic nature? Why? Scorpio is like the proverbial two-year-old who's like, why, 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 why? You answer one question, then they ask why. Anyone with a strong Scorpionic nature is going to always be asking why and asking who am I and wanting to get to the bottom of that because it's about strengthening the soul. Scorpio is a part of the fixed cross. And when you pull in the energies, you funnel it into the sign of Scorpio, Taurus, Leo, Aquarius. It is about our own individual soul nature that is unique to each one of us and that relationship on a soul level. And so this full moon is getting us to connect with that and to look at where we're fixed and not moving forward and the need to move forward in order to evolve and grow. And so having to look at all of this, that trine between Ceres and your and Uranus and Jupiter is a disseminating trine. So it's really beautiful because it actually helps us to integrate as we have the willingness and the courage to look at all of this. And it helps us to expand upon and transform and to reconnect with our own sense of authority. The last thing that I do want to say about this full moon is that oh 
want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. The asteroid Cassandra is in a last quarter square to the sun. The sun is ruled by Venus and Aries. Cassandra is ruled by Uranus and Taurus, which is ruled by that Venus and Aries. Let me start there, and then I'm going to add something to that. I'm dealing with a planetary node, but I don't want people to get lost in the weeds here. So with Cassandra in a last quarter square to the sun in Taurus, Cassandra in Aquarius. The other week, I did a video for the forecast when Cassandra was actually conjunct the sun. Cassandra is technically not the sun to Pluto. Cassandra is technically conjunct Pluto in a new phase still, and both are squaring the sun, but I already talked about that square to the sun. So Cassandra in a last quarter square to the sun in Taurus is, again, this, what do I believe? What do I believe about myself? Pulling in Taurus, the sun. How do I self-actualize through reconnecting with myself? Cassandra is the asteroid where we can have issues around listening to ourselves, our relationship to self, of connecting with our inner knowledge and having the courage to speak. And that is because so often when people have very prominent Cassandras in their chart, they develop self-esteem, self-abandonment, um, an inability to use their voice or to listen to themselves because they've experienced traumatic events of speaking up and not being believed or heard or being ostracized or scapegoated for it because it's affecting someone's security. A great example of this is, have you ever talked to someone about how you felt and instead of them listening to you, they deflected and projected onto you and shamed you and judged you and then created situations where you were ostracized. It's a great um, Cassandra complex going on there. So this full moon can really bring up these dynamics of where we've experienced traumatic experiences around not being believed or heard. And how that has created emotional fragmentation or um, arrested emotional development around that dynamic of where we really experience fear around utilizing our voice or listening to ourselves. And this square can bring up how we have bought into beliefs about ourselves stemming from those types of dynamics and how we're needing to throw them off as a way to reconnect with our inner voice, Taurus, and to transform our relationship to self through understanding that we are worthy, that we are allowed to have healthy self-esteem, that we can rely on ourselves and to trust our inner voice. This is a dynamic of with that sun being ruled by Venus and then Cassandra's ruler Uranus and Taurus being ruled by that Venus and Aries, where we're needing to dissolve these old dynamics of where we've over-identified with the voices of others and liberate from them and have the courage to reconnect with self, even if we feel afraid. So lots can come up for people around what do I believe about myself during this full moon? And it's, again, Scorpio is wanting us to look at where a limitation has been reached on a psychological and emotional level dealing with this. It's interesting because Mercury is retrograde during this and then it stations direct two days later. So a lot of people I've been talking to, friends, clients, are really wanting to, and a lot of them have a very strong Cassandra in their chart right now, um, in their natal chart. And so there are these conversations that they are wanting to have with other people that have been long standing and that they haven't been having because they're afraid of what is going to happen if that conversation happens. There is a key here. 
it doesn't, you can say anything in the best way possible and still be understood or projected on. This is about really having the courage to speak and to allow whoever to do whatever they want with that information. In all actuality, the feedback that you receive from from speaking up and having the courage will really confront you with the truth of whatever situation that you're meaning to talk about. And then you get to make a choice. Do I want to have a relationship with this person or do I not? And it's about really being self-determined to not be who you once were. So I, I wanted to speak to that. I also wanted to say it's really interesting because this whole conversation pulls in Venus and Aries and it's almost like a triple signature because the north node of Venus, the planetary north node, is conjunct Cassandra's ruler, Uranus and Taurus. And so we can see as we have the courage to speak up about these things and these dynamics, what it does is it helps us to transform our relationship to self, to recover those parts of ourselves that maybe we've abandoned because we've been trying to have self-preservation and we've been afraid so it's again reconnecting with our sense of individuality the next day on the 24th the moon is going to still be in scorpio but this time it's going to be in a full phase in conjunct to the north node so to me this really reflects that whatever emotional psychological dynamics that we're coming to understand through this week and this full moon it's now meant to be put in place as a way to start a brand new cycle of evolution, of reconnecting with who we are. Um, so it's almost a blessing, but it can, that in conjunct though also speaks to if you've been resisting doing this, it can create a crisis in your life as a way to recenter you, to get you back on track. So let's work with this energy and not against it, okay? Let's have the courage. Let's really dive into our emotions, even if we're afraid. I say this time and time again, you've got to feel it to heal it. We do not evolve through intellectualizing. That helps us a bit, but we only evolve through our emotional body. It's through getting in touch with our pure emotions, where we felt hurt, where we felt joy. It's the broad spectrum spectrum of our emotional dynamics and then on the 25th mercury stations direct it's going to go and do its third and final pass from 15 degrees to 27 it's going to re um, connect with you know chiron uh, during this time so it's really helping us change our awareness around these old wounds and the courage to do so and the courage to act so that new desires become seeded into our consciousness um, as a way to perpetuate our evolutionary growth. So this is also the time period of where you might understand who and how you are meant to talk to someone and what conversation you are meant to have and what choice you need to make around it. And again, pulling in the Libra dynamic, that person can do whatever they want with that information. It's all, it's absolutely a blessing, even if it, if it's uncomfortable it's knowing that you can stay grounded in your own personal truth and autonomy and you don't have to self-abandon as a way to keep a status quo going. It's status quo does not create evolution. And if you're someone who's wanting to evolve, this can be a conversation that helps you to say, no, I'm not going to be who I once was. This isn't for me anymore. Or oh, wow, this really is a relationship where someone has the ability to listen to me from where I'm coming from. And maybe we agree to disagree, but they still um, have the willingness to understand and validate that I can feel however I want to feel and they don't invalidate. So then on the 28th, Lilith, the asteroid, is in the sign of Sagittarius, and it is in conjunct in a full phase to the sun in Taurus. This is for sure about utilizing what it is we are learning about our authentic nature. Lilith champions for who we are. It's that thing inside of us that is perpetuating us to always stay whole unto ourselves, to not submit or abandon ourselves. And so this is really this need to 
ground within our authenticity and our personal truths as a way to fortify and strengthen our relationship to self. You know, Jupiter is the ruler of um, Lilith right now. It's in Taurus. The sun is being pulled into this. Jupiter and the sun are both ruled again by Venus and Aries. So having the courage to, to ground into your authenticity. It's really interesting because Lilith is retrograde and also is conjunct the south node of Mars. So both are ruled by that Jupiter. That south node of Mars is also retrograde. There is some type of dynamic that some of us are going to be reliving as a way that our soul is desiring for us to relive as a way to stay into like grounded in our personal truths, to not abandon ourselves as a way to fortify our relationship to self, to stay whole unto ourselves. This also has the ability because it's pulling in Mars and Pisces because it's the south node of Mars conjunct Lilith. This has the ability that when we relive this type of experience, we get to resolve it and heal it and culminate a whole cycle of not doing that. And so I just wanted to speak to that. And I thought it was really interesting because this is happening at, on the 28th, the end of this week. So we're working on all of these dynamics that I've been talking about. And um, we are going to get to experience some dynamics where we get to resolve them if we are consciously working with this energy. So this is your weekly forecast. I hope you all have a beautiful week. I think that this is a tremendous week for growth, expansion, liberation, transformation, and healing, connecting with our unique individuality. Um, like I said, I'm going to post the forecast in the description. Uh, I want you guys to check that out. It has links to it on it that connect to you know, the new moon that happened back in November and, and some other things. Um, also, I would love to see some of you guys who were born under the sign of Taurus. I want to hear like, how is this affecting you? This is going to be, uh, you know, for a lot of you, this is a tremendous month of growth for you. Like, holy moly. And I would love to hear about it. I would love to talk to you all and to see what this year is bringing up for you by looking at your solar return as well. Um, don't worry, Gemini's, you will have your turn next month. But I am really blessed by all of you guys who are connecting with me. I love receiving emails or questions from you guys. I love connecting with you guys um, on YouTube whenever you comment. Uh, it's always weird for me because I feel like I'm talking to myself on here and, you know, uh, I feel like some of you guys, um, have an emotional connection with what I'm talking about. And I love it whenever I get to meet you because it's like, oh, I haven't been talking to myself the whole time. So I want you guys to really work with this energy. This is such an amazing month for transformation and personal growth. This is like so many people are wanting to really evolve right now and the world needs it. And we can see how all of the distortions are playing out. Um, and so we do, we need people who can be like, ripples in the water, you know, who do their work and it has an effect on the people around them. And it shows them that they have the ability to do this too and that they're not alone. And the last thing I want to say about this week, especially is this work that we are being called to do really has the ability to change our inner magnetism and our inner vibration, we can call in more like-minded people as we are learning what really feels true and authentic around our values, our needs, and who we are. And so it's so important to do this work because if you're someone who's felt alone or that you 
have a hard time connecting with people because you feel different, this is a time that as you do this work, it really will call in those people like your tribe, your circle. Um, and so keep after it. Just know that there can be a void for a little bit. That's that Saturn and Mars and Pisces and Neptune. But as long as you sit with it, you will understand that there is some type of inner direction that comes that you're meant to follow. And it, it will bring in the people that are meant to be in your life. Okay. So, you know, I say this every week. I love all of you all. And what a tremendous time to be alive. I will see you all next week. And I hope to see you, some of you soon.